you can have your seats, please. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to say thanks to my God for being here today and even enabling me to stand here. I also thank Bishop and the pastoral team for this opportunity. Uh, it's not by strength or power that I'm able to be here or to stand today, but it's by God's will. And uh, yes, it's by his will that I'm here and uh, to bring his word to myself and to you too, because the word is speaking to me also. And uh, we can just start. I don't see any other things. I believe you are all okay. Maybe I didn't say hi to you, but uh, I believe you are good. Amen. I'm not hearing you. Are we okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, I want us to look at something uh, about imagination. Power of imagination. The image you create in your mind. You know, the Bible, most things are about our mind. The mind, mind, yeah? And uh, we often say that, uh, or we often do spiritual affairs, right? So we may also do this and pray a lot, do everything, right? But if your mind is not lined, you are not convinced in the mind, then uh, you may not achieve much. You see, I was trying to look at the Bible, and many times the angel of the Lord appeared to men of God, or just anybody, or God came to them. And uh, they are not believing. And it takes God a great deal to convince them to believe. Right? We know that Gideon did not believe, and he wanted a, a sign. Moses didn't believe he wanted a sign. And uh, God always wants us to you want to change your mind to see that picture. Like he's really trying. If you look at those stories, one on Moses, Gideon, even Abraham and Sarah, they didn't believe that at those, those advanced ages they could still have Isaac, right? But God has to really convince. So if, if you can convince yourself mentally, then it will, be, it will be even easier, right? And you will even achieve more. So, I want us to look at that, the power of imagination, our imagination, or my imagination. And uh, just a dictionary definition of imagination is the ability of mind to be creative or resourceful. But I also tend to think it is the, the ability of mind to see a picture, like to, to have that picture in front of you. Like uh, if you want a nice home, you, you have that picture. It's a four-bedroom, a two-bedroom. I speak in their language because that's my field. Yeah? So you have that picture. If, let's say, you are somebody who breeds dogs, you, you, you have a picture of a dog you, you, you want to breed. Maybe German Shepherd, the other one. This one loved by Nairobi and Chihuahua. Yeah, those ones, yeah? So you really have a picture of something you really want. In your mind, you create it. Then you go for it. If you're a business person, probably you are doing transport from somewhere to somewhere. You want to go maybe to another country to do importation. You really have the picture of what? What you want. And you go for it. So that's, that's what I would think. That's what is imagination. You can imagine it and you can see it. So in Genesis 6, we can see something about Im our imagination. In Genesis 6, verse 1. No, it's 11. Genesis 11, verse 1, not 6. I confused the two. So now the the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Sinai and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. You see, they have now started doing some imagination. Because if you're not imagining to make a brick, like you can't think of doing it, right? They had a brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a what? A city. So they, they already know what they want. The mind already knows. And there is a preparation. And the tower whose top is in the heaven. Let us make a name for ourselves. I think let's jump to six. Let's jump to six. And the Lord said, indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language. 
and this is what they begin to do now nothing that they pro they propose to do will be withheld from them can we look at king james version but verse 6 not new the old one uh, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do the only one person who can make you not do something you've imagined to do is god no other person can restrain you and that's why god is saying now let's go down and confuse their language in this case the imagination was not in line with god's will right and therefore for you to achieve something of course you have to imagine but it must be in the line of god's will so in this case you may be wondering then why did he ask to to confuse their language you know it was not in their will they do want to be scattered they want to do their own things so this can show you how powerful your imaginations are nothing can stop you no one can stop you when you imagine and you are in the line of that's how powerful your imaginations are and uh though this i won't read but remember daniel when he purposed to to pray and fast in daniel 10 that day imagine that he could fast and pray for whatever he wanted it was confirmed in heaven that imagination that's how powerful it is and uh we must know that Satan also knows that nothing can stop your imagination and so the war is in your mind so it is like a mental war warfare you know we know spiritual warfare it's a mental warfare the war is in the mind and uh Satan knows that if it attacks your mind and the blindness you will not have those positive thoughts or uh, the thoughts which are or the imagination which are in the will of the Lord and therefore you will not be able to achieve much and uh, and we know that you know you know when god says like in that 11:6 uh, that no one can stop or no one can prevent you from achieving what you 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 purpose to do you know god means it because god is not a man that he should lie right and you may be saying this thing was said in olden time not today god does not change it's the same yesterday today and forever more so you should have that conviction you get me you should have that conviction that nothing can stop what you've imagined to do even if you imagine to do evil but through the evil people i think it will work because we are both evil but if you imagine to do evil against the the spirit field it will come back to you right the pit you dig you fall in it so that's that and uh in second corinthians 44 this way you can read there and uh, see that uh satan blinds the the, the whose mind the god of these ages has blinded so you can see there's where the the war is once your mind is blinded then that power cannot manifest yeah so you may really be doing many things you may be praying but if your mind is still blinded you are not you are not in the truth you don't know the truth so yeah then uh uh in second corinthians 10:4 to 5 maybe we read that one. for the weapon of, weapon of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in god for pulling down strongholds so these strongholds are not necessarily i don't know what we believe these strong strongholds are but uh the stronghold are those things which are opposing the truth of the lord like if somebody says there's no god you want somebody say jesus didn't die and he didn't resurrect that's a stronghold that opposition So if you are I think okay I don't know what you think a stronghold is but that's what I know it is a stronghold those opposition to to the word of the lord maybe you think somebody which is opposing is a stronghold not really so uh casting down arguments and every i think that exalt itself against the knowledge of god so where do argument happens it happens in the mind you can be arguing arguing within yourself right like uh when we I, when i started i said god appeared to many people and you know these people they have to argue with themselves then they now tell god there like moses was saying send somebody else i can't it i can't do it because he's arguing within himself so that is how powerful your mind can be it can even now make you tell god that no send somebody else me i'm not worthy but remember god qualified there and qualified when those guys saw peter and john then they said okay this guy is so educated but they have not gone to any school Uh, but they are also going to school because they were being taught by Jesus 
all that he was not a a degree holding professor or yeah or a prophet but he had he was teaching them so the arguments happen there so you must cast them down in your mind first because you know sometimes we say i cast it down but now is it physical no it's in your mind bringing every thought also thought is also in the the mind into captivity to the obedience of Christ amen so you can see where the the battle lies and you need the power of imagination to overcome all this and you know you know sometimes we'll see our imagination is so powerful that you sometimes don't even need to pray you can imagine and do it and it happens we we are going to see so in every in a in a, in this thing of imagination there are, there are things which can hinder your imagination and uh, i came about three one could be your past experience when you've really gone through many things in life or when somebody has gone through many things in life so they you try to really make the experiences so experiences so this can hinder you and it can make your imagination not be in line with what god wants you to do for example in uh, genesis 17 15 to 22 there's a story of abraham and sarah the angel of the lord appears to them and tell them a time like this next year or whatever i guess it's next year because it's only nine months then you have the child you will love isaac right but uh, genesis 17 15 to 22 but abram then god said to abram as for sarah your wife you shall not call her name sarai but sarah shall be a name and i will bless her and also give you a son by her name then i will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations kings of people shall be from her then abram fell on his face and laughed right and said in his heart shall a child be born to a man who is 100 years old i don't know whether he was a scientist or a medical doctor who will say like okay 45 is not possible now so so you can see based on his past experience he already believed that this thing can't happen so he cannot really his mind is already shifted even to the to the will of god what god is saying his mind is already far off from from it like how can this happen he can't believe it he can he even laugh at it and accidentally sarah also laughed at it in uh, 18 now chapter 18 the same genesis 18 uh, 11 to 15 So this amazed me like Abraham laughed at the same same thing then Sarah also laughed at the same thing but it takes a uh, angel of the lord also a great deal to really convince them that this thing will happen and uh it will not be to us today if the lord appears to you and tell you something will happen uh just accept it don't be like those people i think it was seed or not whatever who are saying show us your chapter 18 verse 11 show us this uh, miracle so that we can believe Now Abraham and Sarah were old well advanced in age and Sarah had passed the age of childbearing therefore Sarah laughed within herself saying after I have grown old shall I have pleasure my lord being old also so I don't know they must have discussed this thing but the laughing part amazed me so that can show you that our, our past experiences can really pick us off from the will of the lord it can take your mind away you you can't see that image it also happened with uh, samuel no saul when he was told that you will be the king i'm like i'm from the smallest tribe it can't happen right it happens with uh, gideon when he was told that you mighty warrior yeah but now also ask like is a mighty man but uh, if you are told you are mighty but here you are doing you are you, are, you want to hide your weight from uh, some medianites and you are told you are a mighty warrior so it's like okay how, how is this possible his mind can't see that victory he can't see that picture so your past experience can really mess you up but the lord is saying in isaiah 43:18 that isaiah 43:18 there's an encouragement there right he say forget your past and uh focus on the the new things he will be doing and that's also what paul is saying i think uh, Paul would have been one person who 
who, if he had uh, focused on his past experiences when he was still sold, right, he would have not really served the Lord. Because he's the same man who hung the Stephen, yeah? And he went to synagogues looking for disciples to crucify. So if you were to really focus on his past, he will not really serve the Lord. Therefore, you must really know how to deal with your past experiences when it's come to imaginations and how to serve the Lord. And uh, another one was background, your background. I think I jumped the gun. The background is where now we talk of Gideon and Saul. So the background. So you look at yourself and say, you know, bishops used to say, now somebody tell you you'll go into an aeroplane and you say, even our place, we don't have a bicycle. So you look at your background and like, okay, this can't happen. Yeah? This can't happen. And uh, maybe you're like a Joseph, you dream and see this thing, the Lord is speaking to you. But in your mind, you are saying it can't happen. You say, nobody has stepped maybe a college in our home. Nobody has gone past class eight. How will I manage it? can't happen. So, so that can also affect your mind, how you imagine things. But we are told that we need to accept the will of the Lord and remember that it's not by our strength. Even if it didn't happen with other people, it does not mean it won't happen with, with you. And, uh, okay, now with the background is that now we have the Gideon and Saul and all these guys who looked at their their background and like it can't happen, it can't happen. No? Then we have traditions. Your traditions are another thing which can hinder your imaginations. You know, you can already be born again, but uh, you look at things which happens in your tradition and you say, at this time, let's say when you want to get married, and you say like, uh, traditionally, maybe you can't marry before maybe an elder person, right? In your village, so like, you really block yourself from moving on. Right? You can't see it happening. You're like, what will they say? It's that picture. It really blinds you that you can't see. So you sometimes end up lose the, the right person for you because you are really believing on your traditions. And you see, when sometimes you really follow these traditions, you will follow them, and uh, as you follow them, the word of the Lord then now become of no meaning to your life. And uh, this one you can check on Mark 7 where Jesus talked more, more on these traditions and how it makes the word of God useless. And it can hinder your imagination. I know you can imagine there are some traditional things you do, maybe in those ceremonies, like, uh, oh, you must oh, slaughter goat, you must do this, you must do that, all those things, you know, all those things. And here you are a Christian and you are saying now, the old is gone, the new has come, but you know, like you are seeing, like, how can it happen that I don't follow this? Interestingly, another, another guy of the world told me that, two things. You either choose God or choose traditions. He said, if you choose God, choose, follow him. If you choose tradition, follow traditions. He's a man of the world. He told me this. He said, uh, there's no way you can mix the two and succeed. So, so the traditions can hinder your imaginations. It can impede it. And... Uh, you know, I said that sometimes you can imagine things and it happen without even praying for it, right? And it's biblical. In uh, Luke 15, 17 to 24, this is the story of the prodigal son. And I think even the story of creation, I don't think God was praying for creation to happen. He just imagined, let there be earth, it was there. And he said, let it be there, it was. It's not recorded that he was praying, so I can't quote him that he prayed for it, yeah? But it, you imagine these things and they happen. But now in a, this one is a, a closer home one, which we can relate to well. But uh, when he came to himself, okay, this uh, I'll take it halfway. This is the story of prodigals. And you know he took the wealth and went on. Yeah. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare and I perish with anger? I will arise and go to my father. And we'll say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. Just leave it there. Then uh, this guy imagined. He looked back home. He focused. He saw, he saw a picture. And he came back like, okay. How long will I suffer? Yeah, maybe my father is a king. He has everything. Let me go back. And uh, if you read all this story, there's no way we are told he prayed. Right? But we are only told that he came back to him, himself. He imagined something good. 
at their place. He put the shame away and decided to go back. He said, I'll come back as a servant. I knew even if he came back as a servant, maybe his father is this good man who, who treated his servants well. And indeed, he treated them well because he said, uh, they even have leftovers. Right? So, even before he reached home and he was, they saw him from afar, he was welcome as a, as a king. He was slaughtered for God. He was given a, a bull, eh? a nice one. He was given nice clothing. So, you can see how imagination are powerful. Then uh, another one is in Luke. Uh, uh, no, Matthew 9. Let's look at Matthew 9, 20 to 21. This is the story of the woman with the, the issue of the blood. I think for 12 years. Matthew 9, 20 to 21. And suddenly... I was just taking them from where the word of imagination comes. Yeah? So, of course, you can go back a few paragraphs behind, then you read it. And suddenly a woman who had uh, a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. It, she did what? She imagined. He didn't even say, if I go and ask Jesus to pray for me. No, if I can only touch, it is, the, you can see the power it is, how powerful it is. If I can only touch his cloth, I'll be healed. And indeed, she was healed. You see how, you are power, how imaginations are powerful? And uh, I believe you are you are Bible students, you can do more, look for more examples, which are closer. And uh, as I leave you, I leave you with this. In Proverbs 23.7, it's a, a very interesting, uh, maybe part, it's very interesting, Proverbs 23.11. You know, you know, sometimes you meet quotes, the quote, somebody said a great quote. I think these guys, they take them from the Bible, from the Bible. 23, 7, sorry, 7. I think they just make them from the Bible. Somebody said that, as you think so, you are right. Then like, that's a very great quote. But, you see, yeah. for as he think in his heart, so he is. If you create negative pictures, that's the way you will be. If you create positive ones, in the line of God's will, like the human with issue of the blood, then you will receive your salvation. Thank you and the Lord bless you. Amen.